everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we have esteemed astrologer Marie O'Neill giving a wonderful speech on the evolutionary intention of Pluto in Aquarius for healing. As a reminder, our spring term semester is right around the corner. So if you'd like to learn more about our classes, workshops and webinars, please visit keplercollege.org. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Why did we choose to incarnate? And why did we choose to incarnate on this earth plane? Have you thought about that? I have. Welcome, fellow astrologers, budding astrologers, and people who are interested in astrology. Why is this question important? Why do I ask? why we cho chose to incarnate on this earth plane? Well, I ask this question because it's pertinent to the evolutionary intention of Pluto in Aquarius. We chose to incarnate, now this is my answer to why we chose to incarnate. We chose to incarnate because we wanted to know ourselves. We wanted to um, go out into the world through different incarnations and experience life. And then at some point, we wanted to find our way back to ourselves, to who we truly are. Which brings up the other question of who are we? That's a big topic which we won't go into in detail here today. We are a soul incarnate in form. That's actually who we are. And to work our way back home to ourselves, we as the personality must merge ourselves with our soul. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because when we chose to incarnate here on the earth plane and we chose to go out into the big wide universe, we chose to kind of not separate ourselves from our soul, but to um, have experiences based on our personality needs, not the soul needs. We were a better word would be we were like um, children uh, who had gotten away from our parent, so to speak, and just experiencing life. And at some point, our parent starts to call us back home, uh, call us back to the house, so to speak, so that uh, we can be back at home. Now, when we think about this in the form of Pluto, you know, we look at the purpose of Pluto. I mean, what is the evolutionary intention of Pluto in the first place? Well, Pluto, of course, is about death. It's about transformation. It's about um, helping us to shed what no longer serves us. And this is one of the reasons that we, you know, we hear the saying of, or I hope you've heard the saying of where Saturn says, oh my goodness, if you do that, you're going to die. And Pluto comes along and says, that's okay. See me after you're dead. Because it is about deep transformation. And a lot of times to get, well, most of the times to get that deep transformation, we actually have to die to who we were so that we can become who we are supposed to be. It's about um, uh, when we look at the evolutionary intention, it's about showing us, it has to show us our shadow. And it also has to show us our light as we go along this path of determining, of actually healing and coming back home again. Usually the shadow is light is more visible to us than the light, which is quite interesting because as a human race, we tend to 
pay more attention to what is wrong versus what is right. And I believe that's one of the reasons that we pay more attention to the shadow than we do to the light. Make no mistake, we all have both the shadow and the light within us. When we are looking at the evolutionary intention, we're looking at the depth of our attachment to desires that don't serve who we are. This can be painful. It can be extremely painful. The pain level, however, is determined by the attachment that we have to who we are not. If we want to hold on to that, if we're clinging to that deeply, then of course the pain that we experience is really tantamount to, to that. Um, so if we are having, now just because we're having pain doesn't mean we have to suffer. Suffering is really what we're doing when we're holding on to what no longer serves us. The sooner we can let go, the sooner we can eliminate the suffering. Doesn't mean that pain goes away. And the next thing or the goal for Pluto is for us to let go and to evolve into who we are. Now, it's the breakdown of any sense of separation that we might have to the soul. When we're out here in this incarnation, a lot of times we, for, we forget or we have forgotten that we are connected to the soul. And Pluto is there to help us move more towards the merging with the soul and realize that we're not separate. One of the ways that it does that is through helping us understand that we are all interconnected, that there is no separation between any of us. Now, when I think of, uh, when I think of Pluto and the evolutionary intention, I had to go back to the, what I call the beginning cycle this cycle. We've had many Pluto cycles. You can look at Pluto and Nep the Pluto-Neptune conjunction as the beginning of a cycle, Pluto-Uranus as the beginning of a cycle, Pluto-Saturn, you get the picture with that. When I am looking at just strictly Pluto, then I'm looking at Pluto in its beginning with Aries. Now, why Aries? Because Aries, of course, is the beginning of our astrological zodiac. Uh, it is spring. It is. Um, it tells us. It it informs us as to what is new. Uh, it doesn't necessarily tell us how we're going to move through the new cycle, but it gives us information about what we're going to be working with. When I think about Aries, Aries is of course instinctual. It is the uh, directed and inspired energy. It's that beginning point. So it's about the will. It's the urge. It can be the urge to overpower, which is something that we're going to talk about here. It's the urge to conquer. It can conquer. It wants to conquer sometimes just because it wants to control. Sometimes it just wants to go out into the world and just conquer whatever it can, um, it can get its hands on. Aries is, of course, a Mars planet, so or ruled by Mars, so it is going to be fiery. It's going to not necessarily think 
about what it's doing, it's going to just do. If we look at Aries, however, esoterically, then Aries is actually ruled by Mercury. Why? Well, because if Aries can just stop and think before it acts, it becomes much more focused, its will. This is why Mercury is really so important, so pertinent to Aries. So it can be if it is, if Aries is operating in its highest intention, then it can be the vehicle for the power of purposeful use of will versus blind will. Now, let's talk about this a little bit deeper. Pluto and Aries. This cycle began back in 1822 and it ran for 30 years. So we were looking at 1822 to 1852. This was a we had a push for individualization back then. You can, if you think about that particular period of time, most of our ancestors were, well, a lot of them were moving off of farms into cities. We had people who were close to the land, growing the food, moving into the cities and becoming city dwellers. This was also a period of time when we had huge industrialization happening. We had the factories. We had, we had men, typically men, who were using their will to conquer. I believe this is also a period of time when Africa was carved up and you had the, you had the European nations actually going into Africa and starting to pillage and take products and take uh, raw materials and divide up that country. Remember I talked about Aries and what it does. So this is the beginning of that, that cycle. We also had, in my opinion, during that time, the beginning of the modern world that we live in today. We, of course, didn't have computers as we do now, but we had factories, we had people, we could buy things from seamstresses, from tailors. We didn't necessarily produce our own food at that time. It's also a time when the monarchy in Europe began to lose power when parliament started to be more important. So we, during that particular period of time, we didn't have any sense of limits. When we were on the farm, we had a sense of our limits, a sense of how far we could, we could grow. And we could basically just grow as far as our, our food supply and our neighbors, that's pretty much it. So when we started, and we also, as I said, we were closely related to nature. We had a close kinship, a close relationship with nature. And when we moved into the cities, that started to go away. We also, at that time, started to forget our interconnectedness with each other. We, when we were on farms, we had to depend on our neighbors. Our neighbor might've been 50 miles away or 20 miles away, but we had to depend on them. We had to, if we had crops, neighbors would come and help each other bring their crop in or sow their seed or raise a barn. When we moved into the cities, we became more dispersed. We stopped really connecting so much with our neighbors. Why is this important? 
it's important because when we look at this cycle, because I'm looking at the entire cycle, mind you, I'm not going to talk about all of the, the, the movement of Pluto through all of the signs today. We do not have time. Pluto through Aries is, imper is important because it sets the tone. It sets the tone for the entire cycle. What is this cycle about? I believe that one of the purposes of this cycle was for us to go out and expand and grow and develop and develop industrial, you know, become industrialized to basically go out and explore. I believe that's what this cycle was about. Now, I also believe that it is about helping to bring us back home to who we are. And this is something that I say began back in the Pluto and Aries generation or actual that would era actually so we are looking at ethics during that particular period of time uh, how was or how were ethics how were they I mean were we ethical I believe we were probably more ethical when we were on farms versus in cities and these were a generation of mental pioneers uh, that's also another purpose of Pluto in Aries. Now, let's fast forward. We're, fa we're going to fast forward to Pluto in Sag. Why Pluto in Sag? Why is that important? Well, that's important because, you know, Sag is the the planet where we decide what path we're going to take. It's the path that leads us to the base of the mountain that we must climb. We'll unpack this next. Think about what you were doing back when Pluto was in Sag. What path did you choose to take? This particular cycle was between 1995 and 2008. Where were you? What were you doing? What choices were you making? Those choices that you made help determine what you're going to experience with Pluto in Aquarius. Remember, I said one of the purposes of Pluto is to bring us back home to who we are so that we can know ourselves. Well, each stage of Pluto going through the signs, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, was designed to help us do this. Now, most of us, of course, were not incarnated. I don't think we were incarnated, even when Pluto was in Cancer. A lot of us were born during Pluto in Leo, Pluto in Virgo, and so on. And we have, of course, a particular specific role to play in this journey of life, in this journey of the collective of which we are a part of. Going back to Pluto in Sag, Sag is exuberant. It is it doesn't see any boundaries, any limits. It's very, it's very Jupiterian. It's let's get out there. Let's do this. Let's, we know we can do this. One of the things that occurred during that particular period is of course the dot-com boom and bust. This period between 1995 and 2008 was so critical because because as I said, it is where you chose your path. 
of where you wanted to go. So think about that time. Think about what you were doing and the choices you made. Also think about how the universe or whomever you believe in, whether you believe in God or, or Allah or the mother, think about any intuition or in intuition that you had during that time. What was your, what were your instincts? Did you follow your instincts? Did you follow what the collective was asking of you? That's important. Did you have any corrections on your path back then? Did you change jobs? Did you change marriages? Did you change homes, places of, of living? What did you change in your life during that particular period of time? For me, of course, it was a huge, huge period. And, and this is why I say you can have or you could have had course correction during that time because the goal is, of course, to know yourself, right? Moving forward, if you, whatever path you chose in, in with Pluto in Sagittarius, took you to the base of the mountain, to base camp in Capricorn, which began in 2008. And of course, we're at the tail end of that. Excuse me, we're at the tail end of that right now. But in 2008, what was going on? What was going on in your life? Were you, were you happy? Were you, were you climbing a particular mountain? Because that is where you climb the mountain. Pluto and Capricorn, those years, of course, are 2008 to 2024. We have about two more years, really, of Pluto and Capricorn because it's finishing up. This is the mountain. What mountain were you climbing? Have you climbed that mountain? Have you gotten to the top? What did you find at the top of that mountain? Was it fool's gold? Or did you get to the top of the mountain and look across and see another mountain and think, oh my goodness, that's the mountain that I was supposed to climb? Well, this leads us to Pluto in Aquarius. And this is where we get our reward. Remember, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and also Saturn. Pluto in Aquarius is going to, at the very beginning, give us the results, the report card, so to speak, of the mountain we climbed, whether it was worthwhile. This is where we will find our shadow and our light. And the amount of shadow is going to be determined by how much light, how much, how much we, or how we climb that mountain in Capricorn. Did we climb the right mountain? There is always an opportunity to, to course correct. When we're in Capricorn, however, to course correct there means we have to climb back down the mountain and choose another mountain. That sometimes is not easy. We know that at the beginning of 2008, we were shown our shadow with the banking industry, which I won't go into. You were also shown your shadow, as was I. And we were also shown our light. We want to hold on to the light while we work on our shadow. And we must do this consciously, especially now, because we're in a particularly sensitive point or sensitive period of time. When we think about Pluto in Aquarius, we know that this is about the collective, and the collective is made up of us, the individuals. 
how do you heal? How do you heal trauma? How do you heal from the suffering that you've experienced? How do you heal that in the collective? I hope that you have begun or will begin on the journey of individuation because it's important for all of us to number one, know who we are. This is the whole point. Remember, we're with Pluto. It's bringing us back home to we, who we are. And part of who we are is a part of the collective. And in the collective, we have to be uniquely ourselves. If we are not uniquely ourselves, then we are speaking group speak, group thought. And that doesn't help the collective. Think about, of course, an orchestra. In an orchestra, they're playing together in unison, but each instrument is played in its, it's played on its own, but all of the instruments together come together to make the sound, to make a huge sound. This is an imperative period of time that we are in. And this cycle of Pluto and Aquarius, of course, is going to run from 2023, so to speak. Well, I actually say 2024 to 2043. So we're looking at a 20 year period. And as I say, that this is going to be working in groups. And we see that. We see that with the movements that have been happening. Because with the, with the last sign, you end up having a foreshadowing of what's coming. So if we look at the last year or the last couple of years, especially when we had COVID, when you look at that and you look at all of the movements that came out of that, we look at nature and, and how we're looking, we're taking care of nature. That is a foreshadowing of what we will be working with, with Pluto and Aquarius. Now, of course, with Pluto and Aquarius, we're going to have more technology. We have AI, we have all of these tools that are available to us as a collective and as individuals. The question for each of us is how will we use these tools? Will we get lost in the tools? Will we allow the tools to take over our lives? Will we, for example, be able to set limits on our gaming? on the technology that we use, how much we're online. This is something, this is going to be a push-pull situation with Pluto in Aquarius because we're being pressured and will be pressured continuously to be a part of the group and to stand tall and strong inside of the group, you must have a solid core you must be able to get quiet and know intuitively and instinctually what is right action in every moment and be able to do that for yourself and align yourself with causes and groups that fit your belief system and be still uniquely you. How do you do that? Well. It's going to take a lot of work. There's a lot of healing that has to take place. One of the ways that you can do this is before you agree to do anything with a group or neighbors or whatever, feel into it if you can. Or if you can't feel into it, just um, say that you're going, you need to think about it and then do your homework and analyze and, and figure out if this 
if this works for you. This is going to be a huge period for all of us. And as I said, this is, we know that this is going to be um, pivotal because it is about the good for all. And it's working for the all. It's working for the collective. This is where we have two points on this. This is where we, I believe, are coming back to our relationship to nature because we have to. We have to realize that we are a part of nature. That's also a part of Pluto in Aquarius and leading us to the group, the all. We are a part of the all, the everything, the trees, the, the grass. We're a part of that. We're no different. It's also a, in my opinion, a time when we, we are creating all of this technology externally. And I believe that all of that technology we have within ourselves. We can biolocate, lo we can pick up thoughts out into the, in the collective. We have our intuition. All of the things that we are creating is what we must develop. All of those skills is what we must develop within ourselves. And this is a part of Pluto in Aquarius. It's also supposed to be a sign, well, actually, it's a sign of the ego. Um, and we can get lost, as I said, in the group. And you don't want to get lost in the group. And when I say that it's a sign of the ego, it's a sign of the ego letting go of attachment, though, that it is separate from nature. And it becomes an expression of the collective vehicle for the will to good. If we can do this, because remember at the very beginning of this cycle, it's as though we're in an Aries period again where we're trying to figure out what the period is going to be. And we're trying on new shoes, trying to get comfortable, needing to get comfortable with them. We have to do this for ourselves individually. What do we want? Where do we want to be in this period? Do we, what is the will to good? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for the collective? When we're going to heal, we are healing now. We're going to begin healing inside the groups. And that, as I said, is going to be much more challenging to do because groups can be really loud with the voice. And if you are in the group and you're not, and you don't belong in that group and you're in that group, how do you extricate yourself from it? How do you move on to the group that is right for you? I say to you that your intuition, your guides, your divine have been talking to you for a long time, guiding you on what is right for you, what is right action for you. If you haven't paid attention to it, it's imperative that you do. What you do during this period of time no longer just affects you. It does affect the collective because we are all a part of the collective. And it's, we all have our work to do. At the beginning of this cycle, we also have to look at the ruling planet or planets actually of Aquarius. That is going to inform us on what we're going to experience individually and collectively. 
And as we know, the ruling planets are Saturn and Uranus. Saturn is in Pisces. Uranus is in Taurus. Saturn is going to be in Pisces until 2026. And Uranus is going to be, I'm sorry, Saturn is going, yes, Saturn is going to be in Pisces until 2026. And so is Uranus going to be in Taurus until 2026. So when you think about Saturn in Pisces and and Uranus in Taurus, what does that mean for you? I mean, this is Earth. This is, I mean, Taurus is about the raw materials. It's about our values. What do we value? This is what Uranus is asking us. What do we value in the collective? What do we value for ourselves? Pisces, what is Pisces? Pisces sees no boundaries. Pisces sees the collective consciousness of everything. What we have now is a, I want to call it a powder keg. And I say a powder keg because it's Pluto and there's explosions, the explosions within ourselves, there's earthquakes, there's all of these things happening, especially with Uranus in, in Taurus. We are being pressured to evolve. And we need to do that quickly. That is it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie. What a, what a beautiful and eloquent message. And thank you so much for, for joining us today. You are welcome. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you have time for, for a couple of questions? I do. Um, let me just <clears throat> see my battery just sit low and I, oh my goodness, <laughs> these are wonderful having all these hearts. <laughs> so many hearts. That. Thank you, everybody. Such a great let, let me just tur turn my bat uh, my battery says low, so let me just check the cord real quick. I'll okay, no problem. No second. problem. <laughs> just a second. Now could be a good time to let you all know that Marie is doing a course with Kepler College, and it's starting soon, May twentieth. I guess that's not soon, but uh, it's in the spring semester. She'll be teaching the course that's called Fundamentals of Life Coaching for Astrologers. It's a five-week course, and I'm going to drop the link here in the chat box if you want to learn more. Oh, perfect. Woohoo! And this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having an issue with my camera. Are, are you all plugged up, Marie? Yes, I'm all plugged up. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> well, sorry, my, my camera's gone a bit funny, but I've got, uh, I've got a question here. So would having an unusually high number of Pluto transits indicate coming into this life with a massive need to reconnect to the soul's purpose? I, so is, is the question having a lot of Scorpio planets or, or Scorpio signs? Um, so, I think Sara here is saying they have six planets in Capricorn Cardinal. Yeah, it's, um, you know, with those cardinal signs, there, I look at them because they change the seasons, you know, and that's climbing a mountain. That's climbing quite a few mountains uh, in this incarnation. And I would say, yes, it is. And this is the way that she has, you have chosen to, um, to get back home to yourself. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what are your thoughts on Pluto entering the eighth house in somebody's chart? How am I uh -huh. going to interpret that? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a that's a deep one because Pluto's at home in the eighth house, and it's going to it's going to it's going to force the person's hand on working on their shadow. Because everything that is hidden, all of our secrets are in that house. Everything we don't want other people to see or know about, even ourselves, is in that house. It's also the house of being deeply intimate 
And so we have to become intimate with ourselves. Pluto is about truth and it's going to force the person's hand with seeing truth and truth about their relationships and truth about themselves. It's a good thing. It might, you know, and the level of pain that the, that the person may encounter, they may not in, encounter much pain at all, but the level, level of pain is determined by how aligned they are with their soul. Because Pluto, after all, in the eighth house is really about us coming home to ourselves. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for a beautiful presentation. Now, you'll be coming with us at Kepler, but how can people find you personally? Do you have a website or social media? How can people contact you? I do. I have a social media page. Uh, well, Facebook, Instagram, you can always find me on Padma Life Coaching. My website is PadmaLifeCoaching.com. I have a book website and thelotusopened.com where you can find information on my book, which is a memoir talking about my life and how I <laughs> worked with myself, especially during heavy Neptune periods and Pluto periods. It's more for helping other people, giving people tools to walk through their journey by having them know a little bit about my journey. So you can always email me, Marie at PadmaLifeCoaching.com. And that's P-A-D-A. -A. Padma is Sanskrit for lotus because I love the lotus flower. It's one of my totems. It, it, it means I love the lotus because it has to grow in the mud and the muck. And each of us, my goodness, when we are going to evolve, we have to evolve through that mud. <laughs> and then we can, we come up and we become beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous flowers. <laughs>